Welcome to the narrowboat that James built. Thanks for watching. This is Project 57, a narrowboat given to me by a subscriber who doesn't want the boat anymore. The boat had been sitting on hard standing for nearly two years and hasn't been in the water for quite some time. The boat hasn't been lived on and as, as a result has fallen into a bit of a bad state of repair inside. As you can see, a bit of tidying up to do. But round the back, it's even worse. This is the Vetus 42, completely submerged in rainwater and battery acid. Now our job is to fix this up, refit and fit out to suit my needs as a liverboard continuous cruiser with children. Let's get cracking. And as the skip has arrived, my first job today is to tidy up all the rubbish outside on the stern deck, on the well deck, underneath the boat, clear out all the rest of the stuff in here, which is definitely for the skip. And then I can start to make things a bit tidier in here. Up. I need to build this out. So I've got this from Ralph. So that's got me submerged and then that'll spout it out. so I can get to that. Now I'll try with the wet back. Right, let's do that. I'm still getting the hang of these doors. Going in's fine. I keep bashing myself on the way out though. And after realising I had it on blow, not suck, I was now ready to start drying out this engine bilge, finally. Right, about a thousand of these later, this might be empty. <laughs>
Right, you can really spot the difference now. That bit there, that bit there, and a bit of that bit there has all been vacuumed up quite well. And it's actually come up okay. Um, there's a lot of sediment and crap everywhere, which the wet vac is actually sucking up most of it. So that's okay, I've got rid of all the water. So the engine is no longer submerged, which is a, a relief. So I'm gonna stop and have a cup of tea and then carry on trying to at least dry the bottom of that. Right, this is my first time and your first time of seeing this Vitas 42 not submerged in water. Um, the engine bay is actually pretty nice. It's quite spacious in there. There's a lot of weights on that side. That was over there. So obviously that was used to trim the boat. But this hasn't been in the water for ages, so I'll take all that out and we'll see we'll see if we need to trim it afterwards. There's the manufacturer's badge. I'll give that a clean up. But yeah, it's a... Uh, I'm going to basically just leave it to dry and air dry. So I've got to still clean a bit more out. I've got loads of nappies back on slow patrol. So I'm going to get them all sorted and kind of clean this up as much as I can. At least then for probably next week, it's going to be a nice place for, well, a nice er uh, place for Ralph to spend some time. So those are the batteries there. Those are the domestics, they're all okay. That is the starter battery which exploded. There's another battery over there and there's another battery in the bow. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, Ralph thinks a potential reason why that was, why that's blown is because it's been connected to that solar charger and the wind charger, which is there and it's all still live. So I'm gonna disconnect all of these. They're all knackered anyway, so I'll get rid of them and we don't know what we're going to replace them with actually to be honest they're good batteries so i will test them but i don't know what i'm going to replace it with yet right i really am making some progress now so all of the owner's stuff is stowed away underneath the bed everything on all the tools and stuff which are useful and bits and pieces are on top of the bed so now if i can get rid of this desk Imagine this is going to need much persuasion. No. the original board that's oak face ply it's all been painted over that's a pity oh well. right uh, now what yeah that used to be a dinette you can see that yeah clearly the remnants of an old dinette 
obviously you can see this bit of wall here coming down there bench there table there bench there it's usually on a platform um so that the seat level is higher up for the window so um that's obviously why this floor has been cut away now this is a nice oak floor kind of all the way through so my plan will be to try to get this good again sand it all back and make it nice but that's a long time away um right it's getting there right so far so good i'm pretty much there in terms of having got rid of all the rubbish that's all in the skip i can see all the floor all the owner's personal bits and pieces are in the bed so uh, and all the tools are now on top of the bed so there's a good chance now to kind of get my head around how this boat's been put together and how the systems work uh, which brings me on to five things i love about this boat and five things i dislike so dislike number one this ceiling it's tongue and groove i don't have a problem with tongue and groove ceilings on narrow boats per se because it enhances the length of it it does look good only if they're installed properly which this one is not very good join 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 uh where's the join here join you know it's just it, it just doesn't look right um so this i think is gonna have to go um which is not the end of the world because it means that I can then access the steel roof and what I'm potentially considering is in the galley installing a Houdini hatch here like a coach roof would have so getting rid of this tongue and groove is the way to go the second thing I dislike is this stove Firstly, it's massive. It's way too big for the boat, so it has to go. But the thing I dislike mostly about this area of the stove here is that it's in the wrong place. Firstly, a stove and a narrow boat should not be at the end. It should be in the middle, ideally, because that way you benefit from more heat distribution. But sometimes with layout, it can't be avoided. It has to be at this front bulkhead. Um, but the most important thing with a stove is that you've got line of sight from the stove as far down the boat as you can get because then the fans can blow all that hot air down there. This one here, yes it does have line of sight down to the bedroom there but it won't blow the, 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 uh, the warm air the way down. So something I've definitely noticed on Slow Patrol and on Rob's boat, um, the best way to design it is having stove there in line with the corridor so it's better for heat distribution third dislike is this bloody narrow this corridor but also these radiators they are about 120 mil from the wall so already this is the narrowest spot and then you can buy obviously much slimmer rads than that obviously having rads is good but no, nothing that chunky that's just mad they have all got to go okay the next two dislikes are outside the boat the first one is that bloody monstrosity um it's got a whole load of controls down there i'm sure wind turbines work but not on a boat not in the field of view not looking that ugly not something that's going to be ripped off by the bridge in Apsley. so yeah that's going to go and finally, the fifth dislike. There, 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 there. There's more on the other side. Skin fittings, where the waterline is there. These are just not just a dislike. These are bloody dangerous. So they're all gonna go. I've got more round. Hang on, got more round here. They're all gonna go. But enough about all that, these are the five things I love about this boat. The amount of windows, one, two, three, four, five, hatch, frosted one in the bathroom, eight, nine, ten. And they're all 90s, so they're decent sized windows, unlike on Slow Patrol, they're 60s. So 
that's nice. The only problem is that all these quarter height ones, none of them open fully. The only way I've got of doing that is to hatch there, hence the fact I like a Houdini hatch in the roof, my bow doors and my stern doors. But yeah, the amount of windows in this place is brilliant. Right, the second thing I love about this boat is this well deck. Never had a well deck. Having an outside space at the front of the boat for what could be maybe three people or me and the kids or whatever is absolutely brilliant. We use Rob's all the time. So I'm really happy about having this. Having a proper gas locker in the front there for two 13 kilogram back gas cylinders is you know, really useful as well. But yeah, having a well deck is great. I've only obviously got a stern deck on my boat, but this boat not only has the well deck, but also has this massive stern deck. which when it's all kind of put together. It's great. Right, the next thing I love about this boat is the height of the internal and the dimensions. Um, the ceiling height is really good. It's much better than slow patrols, but I've done a config uh, on paper on the boat back at slow patrol. And I think I've come up with an internal configuration to get in two bedrooms, one bathroom, galley, dinette, lounge. So the dimensions of this boat could be absolutely perfect. Right, the next thing I love about this boat is its lines and its shape. Price Fallows have really put some thought and some attention to detail here and it's lovely. So around at the stern of the boat, got some decent hooks there to anchor on the, the rear bumper, but also on rudders, you tend to have a hole at the top to chuck a rope through if needed. Look at the hole this one is. Isn't that beautiful? And on the side of the boat, at the back, you've got this nice curve here, which makes entrance just that little bit more generous, but just adds a lovely shape to the boat. Something that could be exaggerated with paint or coach lines or something like that. And at the front, the rubbing strakes come all the way up here to the front. Nice little detail there. and quite pointy. I know that sounds a bit silly, but certainly compared to slow patrol, but it just has a nice shape to this bow. Really nice shape. Right, the fifth and final thing I love about this boat is the fact that the floor is dry. Um, as I said, it's got two floors, it's got a sub floor here and then an oak floor on top, but I've accessed the bilge, it's all dry and the boat has been spray foamed. So in terms of like the foundations, you've got good steel, it's all dry and it's been spray foamed. It's been lined okay, it's just ply, it's all been painted. It's okay, I mean, shame because this is oak face ply, it'd be nice to have continued that throughout the boat. I could sand it back, but that oak face ply, is, the veneer is really quite thin, so I probably won't bother, I'll just paint it. But in terms of like the actual, you know, project ahead of me, it's nothing like as bad as Slow Patrol was. So that is really, really good news. Those doors need some attention. I'm about done here for the day. Uh, it's looking so, so much better. Rob's coming down tomorrow to kind of have a look at it. So at least he can get around it and kind of see it for what it is. But it's gone pretty good. The next thing I've got to do is get rid of that stove. So it's huge, it weighs a ton. Um, but we can bring the forklift up, put it on a pallet, and the forklift can come to the well deck there and we can take it out the well deck door. So that's a bit of a relief because I didn't fancy taking that thing down the steps. Um, so, uh, and we'll have to sell that. It's brand new, never been used, but yeah, we'll have to sell that. Um, don't know what I'm going to be doing about heating yet. Don't know what I'm going to be doing about electrics yet. Don't know what I'm going to be doing about water yet. Uh, I'm going to start to investigate water, water tanks under the well deck. Uh, the engine is water cooled, so if the engine is going to start and stuff, so we'll find that out on Monday because that's when Ralph's going to hopefully have a start to have a look at that. So if the engine works and it's water cooled, that means a calorifier. Um, but yeah, anyway, loads of things to think about still. Um, but I'm going to go back to Slow Patrol a bit no, now and start working on more of the layout of the boat because, as I said, I think I can get it to the point where I've got two bedrooms, bathroom, 
lounge, kitchen, dinette, and two decks. See you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.